Let's take a look at a couple of different ways to pick up objects with third person games. All right, so I'm going to show you first off using a raycast to do your detection. Now, in my case, it's just coming from the player, but you could make yours come from the camera if that's what you wanted. And that would be perfectly fine. It would effectively be the exact same thing. Um, it's just coming from a different point. And the camera, I want to believe is how a lot of games do it. But depending on your game, you may be fine just getting it, getting away with just sticking out, sticking it on your player. But let's go ahead and take a look. And something important to note here is my cube here. That is going to be my interactable. The object I'm interacting with is just a static body with a mesh and a collision shape. And that static body I'm putting on layer nine. And I've got layer nine labeled as interacts. So you can see here, this is, or in a case like this, I would have all my interactables on a single layer. Now, if you hover your mouse over that layer, you're going to see bit and value 256. That's important. I'm going to show you how you can calculate that for any layer that you want to work with here. And the mask is going to be the same thing, right? Bit eight value 256. So I'm going to show you how to uh, calculate this right now as we go in with our Raycast, because that's what we're going to use. The Raycast doesn't have any signals to determine um, if it's colliding and passing this object, and then we could take that and then figure out or do what we need with that. So we need to take a little, a few extra steps. Now this is just a Raycast, just casting out in front of my player. Nothing special. And our interactable, I told you is on layer nine, nothing special about it. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is inside of my process function, I'm going to check if my Raycast is, is colliding. Of course, I have a variable storing this up top. And if it is colliding, then I'm going to store whatever it's colliding with into a variable called OBJ. I'm going to get the desired layer that I want or my interactable layer, which is nine. Of course, I don't have to store it here. I could store that at the top. That'd be fine. Now, here's how you calculate this. We use exponents. So you do two to the power of layer minus one. So in this case, this is going to give us two to the power of eight, right? So two to the power of nine minus one gives us two to the power of eight and two to the power of eight would give us 256, which is our value. So we want to check if our obj.collision layer is equal to that 256 value that I have stored here. And because there are some errors that could pop up, I'm also going to make sure that obj does not equal null in case there's something that interrupts it partway through this frame. And then we're going to follow the same pattern in this section as we would in the uh, in the next style of detection. Um, so we're basically going to say if our object is not inside our, our array of nearby objects or our array of nearby interacts, then we're going to add it to our list. Now, this should be in the case of a raycast, you'll probably only ever have the one object, which is fine. And we're going to say, if not interact label visible. So if our label isn't showing on screen, then I'm going to show it. And then I'm just going to say, if this isn't the text, go ahead and set it to say, press E to pick up. All right. So here is just, I'm just displaying on screen to the player that, Hey, you can interact with this object. But the main piece that you need is just these three lines here. So we can check our layer and you don't have to use layers. Of course, you could use groups if you wanted. 
So if our object is null or the collision layer for some reason is not our interact layer here, then we're just going to return. And if our array cast is not colliding, then we're just going to clear out the array of nearby interacts. And I'm just going to hide that label again. All right. So I'm just going to remove that print at the end. So I'm not flooding my output there anymore. And for a ray cast, that's it. It's as simple as that. For doing a detection again, this could be on your player. It could be coming from your camera and ignore the player. Uh, it's up to you. So that is one method of doing this detection. So if I go to character from my ray cast and I'm going to disable it. The next way that we're going to talk about is just using the using an area 3D. Um, and just having that cover a space in front of the player. Of course, the longer you make it, the further that detection range is going to be. So the shorter it is, the closer the player has to be to that object. And you can see when this plays, it's going to work exactly the same as our Raycast did. Only difference is we're doing this based off of our uh, player. Rather than a Raycast. Right, we're doing this based off the front of our player. Okay, so to do this, uh, this area style uh, here, as you see, we'll go ahead, we interact or it shows up our label is there to tell us that we can interact with the object. See, it's only there when we are close enough. And of course, since we're working off of the same system, of course, I can pick it up and everything else works exactly the same. Um, so in order to do that, I actually need to comment out my process function because that is constantly, if you remember, uh, hiding the label and clearing out my list, which means I'll never actually be able to pick anything up. Um, so I just commented that out. And obviously, um, you wouldn't have both of these systems in play at the same time. All right, so we're going to have two signals, on body enter and on body exit. Now, when we enter, I'm going to add that body, which is going to be the object into my uh, nearby interacts array. And I should note here that the uh, area that we're using here, the mask is set to nine in this case, instead of our layer, because we want to interact with objects that are on layer nine, which is going to be our interactable object. All right, so on body entered, we add that to our list of nearby interactables. Now the object that is first in line, right? Index zero is obviously going to be our closest object. Once we look away, then the next object will be our closest. Um, but again, after adding that to our list, all we're doing is just showing our label on screen and setting the text and that's it. Now, when a object leaves that, uh, area uh, we're just going to call erase on our nearby interacts and erase the body that exited the area so you can see if we're interacting with two objects right and two objects get added in right index zero index one which should be the closest object first otherwise it'd be a little confusing how you got the item behind it first um, but if we were to erase index zero and you get that object out of there, then what used to be index one is now, of course, index zero and is now our closest object. So you, you'll always know what the closest object is as well. So we're going to say if not nearby interacts. So this statement here is basically saying if our list is empty, right, after we, we removed an item. So if there's no more objects to interact with, then we're going to hide the label. So this will make it that if we have more than one object we can interact with, one of them leaves the area, our label should still stay on screen. All right. And the last 
Oops. The last method is effectively the same as our area here that we just used, only instead of putting it on the uh, player, you would put an interactable section directly in front of the object and you would detect when the player is standing in front of it. All right, so that, that's our three different detections. Now, what about the actual pickup? Well, the actual pickup is going to be right here. So if input is action just pressed, my interact button, then I'm going to check if nearby interact. So if we have something we can interact with, right? This list is not empty. There's at least one object in there. Then I'm going to store uh, the first item as a variable cut object. And I'm using pop front instead of uh, getting the index, just because if we got the index and stored it uh, for this object, then we would have to uh, remove this out ourselves. Whereas if we use pop front, we're getting that first object, but we're also removing it from that list at the same time. So now we can take that object and we can queue free it to remove it from this world. And that's all we're doing in this example. But of course, if this was an actual game and you're interacting with it, all right, boom, we go ahead, we remove it. And uh, in your case, you might be adding this object to your inventory. You might be uh, doing an animation, or maybe a button press and making something happen. Uh, whatever it is in your game, you would do that right here. Now, of course, if you have different objects, then you might want to have different classifications. Uh, break down your interactables in even further. But um, that's it. That's the idea of uh, making these interactables that we can pick up using our in third person. So we got a raycast, which in my case, again, if we're just going over it, raycast, I got mine coming from the player. You could make yours come from the camera if you wish. I've got an area that's in front of my player to detect objects uh, that are only in front of my player and I have to be close enough. And third option is to take that same system, but put it in front of your object and to take the player instead of the object. All right. So there's a few different ways that you can detect, pick up and interact with objects. Uh, in a third person game, you guys know I prefer doing 2D stuff, but we had a question for 3D, so there we go. And that'll do it for this video. Take care. Have yourselves a good one. It is really hot here, so I'm going to go cool off, get a drink. Um, but take care. Have yourselves a good one, everyone.